Hi, I'm Ksenia and welcome to Guiding Star Astrology. I'm your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm going to show you how the stars are going to affect your life this week. In my videos, I use both Vedic and traditional Western techniques with tropical astrology, not sidereal astrology. I also use the traditional system of whole sign astrology for my analysis. You can use this video to the best of your advantage by listening to the introduction to understand what the week holds for you and then going to the timestamps for your sun, moon and rising sign to get a more personalized forecast for the week ahead. Astrology is not designed to scare you. It's designed to give you information so that you know what the good and the challenging energies in the week ahead will be and you can therefore consciously work with them to the best of your advantage. Remember, knowledge is power. Now there are scammers about and so if you should receive a message from me on any platform requesting your money for a reading, know that it is a scam, report them immediately. And now settle in and let's see what the astral skies have in store for the week ahead. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm going to empower you through the tool of astrology this week. Thank you also everyone for all the love that's been expressed online this week regarding my recent relationship astrology video that I put up on Valentine's Day with my gorgeous fiance David. I'm so pleased you all enjoyed that. It, it really warms my heart to know that that was appreciated. Thank you. Pluto Mars conjunction last week everybody what happened for you there's been a lot of talk about things going on in the mundane world in the political scene out there in society and how Pluto Mars affected things but what happened to you personally that you saw Pluto Mars conjunction having effect in for me I happened to cut my little finger on that day very very annoying obviously not a common occurrence that I would cut my finger um, but Mars rules things that we cut Mars rules sharp implements and um, certainly this was a very unexpected cut on the the serrated edge of the, um, the glad wrap or the cling wrap that we use so not a pleasant experience thanks very much Pluto Mars share in the comments below what happened for you on the Pluto Mars conjunction day and how it impacted your life even if in a little minuscule way like I experienced now this week I just want to share with you before we dive into the astrology that's unfolding this week I've been re-watching my transits through the houses series I have um, a, a video series for the transit of every planet from Jupiter to Pluto so Jupiter Saturn Uranus Neptune and Pluto they're all there on my YouTube channel and you can simply go to the transit that you are currently having for any of those five planets and see what the effects have been in your life and sort of analyze that through the lens of astrology but also look at what's coming up for you and all your loved ones at any given point in time when the planets change signs so it's a really really powerful tool that's available for you here on the guiding star youtube channel at any time simply go to the playlist and check it out but I, I was looking through them all and listening to my analysis of uh, the planets changing and how it's going to affect me and David and my children and everybody else in my life that I, I treasure. Um, and it was so, so, so interesting. But what was very fascinating to me was my very first transit of the planets series, which was Uranus. And I recorded that in 2019. At that time, as I was watching these videos, I realized how much I was struggling at that time. I couldn't even afford a decent chair to sit on and all through the series, you can hear the chair squeaking away in the background every time I moved slightly on it. And it was a, a chair that I bought from a thrift store years, years earlier and it was so noisy and annoying as I did this reading. My microphone was also very primitive as well compared to what I use now. Seeing that video series made me realize just how far I've come along on this journey of sharing astrological knowledge with you here on the YouTube channel. And it's thanks to all of you, my beautiful, wonderful viewers, that I am almost at the point of having 30,000 subscribers. In fact, this video this week might be just what tips it into that 30,000 subscriber realm. 
I've come so far. I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful to you all. Thank you for being here each week, my friends. Thank you for supporting not only my work, but simply the growth of astrology, the knowledge of astrology, this incredible ancient science. Thank you for supporting that through being here on my channel and also the channels of many other um, brilliant astrologers that share their work online. Bless you all as you've blessed me. I just want to say big, big heartfelt thank you to everyone here on my YouTube channel. And without further ado, let's dive into the energies of this week. And right out of the gate, we have the sun moving into Pisces. This is happening on the 19th of February if you're in Australia and the 18th of February in other parts of the world such as the USA who are a day behind us here in Australia. And this event marks 30 days of compassion, mysticism and being able to transcend our earthly reality or our earthly boundaries if you like and it can be a very very potent time especially if you happen to be Pisces rising sun or moon. For most of us now we're going to be able to connect to purposes and meaning that far, go far beyond our observable bleh, get my words out observable reality in a very powerful way which means we might be getting you know psychic downloads or channelings or seeing omens around us all the time more so than usual when the sun moves through this very very potent sign connected to the other dimensions and to mysticism now for some with less conscious expressions of the stellar energy there might be experiences of the shadow side of Pisces which is being victimized that might surface during this transit you might feel a victim you might be feeling like you're taking a, being taken advantage of um, feeling as though you aren't quite grounded your feet aren't on the ground you're sort of a little bit spacey so to speak and there can be resentment too that pops up during this transit in the shadow energy as well if you have had to sacrifice uh, or give up things uh, in life in order for the sake of other people or circumstances or whatever you can develop a very resentful feeling about those things while the sun illuminates those self-sacrifices when it moves through the sign of Pisces now these are things that I've described are all the Pisces shadow energies and I want to just tell you my friends never forget that you create your own reality Pisces is dreams coming true Pisces is grand visions and idealism Pisces is also these shadow sides I've talked about what manifests for you is very much what you choose to see in your reality okay keep that in mind Pisces is this elusive energy but we create our own reality trust your intuition my friends when the Sun is moving through Pisces for 30 days feel into what your sensitivities are saying to you listen to your gut trust your instincts and above all flow with what's unfolding in your life now acceptance is a very powerful tool in life and as we observe astrology accept what is happening flow with it and seek to change it where it doesn't feel comfortable not rail against it not get upset about it flow with it but and seek acceptance but um, also if you're unhappy with the way things are seek to make changes trust flow and receive these are the essences of Pisces energy if you like you could even for the month of Pisces uh, sun through Pisces duration you could put a little mantra up on your bathroom mirror that says I trust I flow and I receive great mantra for opening your heart up to the universe and all the blessings that are available to us through the universal energies Pisces is a water sign it's a feminine sign it is a receptive sign so for many of us during this Pisces season we if we're open if our hearts are ready and if the the soil of our heart is fertile and and waiting we can receive from the universe the blessings that it has to give moving along on the 22nd of February in Australia and the 21st of February in other parts of the world that are a day behind Australia we have Venus conjuncting Mars at six degrees of where are we down here six degrees of Aquarius let me pop this on the board here six degrees this it's actually six degrees and 58 minutes so almost seven degrees to be exact and what a precious energy this is like all conjunctions it actually heralds the beginning of a brand new cycle 
brand new cycle that we're all going to be influenced by and this time the cycle is with Venus and Mars themes what are Venus and Mars themes passion desire love sex relationship Venus is also money and Mars is our our willpower and our drive to go after what we desire including monetary material things as well but Mars Venus conjunction says that we want intimacy that feels in alignment now on this day the 22nd but remember we're setting up a whole new cycle I'll talk about the cycle in just a second we want intimacy that feels in alignment not just sex for the sake of it or relationships that have no spark you know this this is not actually an energy for one night stands that are meaningless we want to feel substance in our connection now in fact during this last cycle of Venus Mars many people have been finding their soulmates especially in this era of new earth emergence so this is a uh, uh, this union of the two planetary lovers in the sky is a powerful and special one I'm going to talk about that in just a second before I get to that though I want to also mention that your creativity is heightened with the combination of these two coming together so your creative juices are flowing and you're feeling very very fertile in what you can produce you can take action on financial matters you can turn over a new leaf with love or money or artistic endeavors during the beginning of this new cycle um, and these new you know turning over of a new leaf looks set to impact your life in a, in a new way for at least the coming two years so Venus Mars okay I need to talk about this cycle as I've just said it's a two-year cycle usually so it'll be another 24 months before we see Venus and Mars come back together again but it's 24 months also since we last had a conjunction of Venus and Mars but that last conjunction of Venus and Mars was a very different conjunction very unusual conjunction it's not entirely unheard of but it isn't of the more common variety of Venus and Mars conjunctions so I need to explain why that was so and why this last two year cycle of Venus Mars has been exceptional and different so many people I do readings all the time for love and relationships and so many people have been finding their soulmates over the last cycle of Venus and Mars um, so many people have been going through separations and divorces um, and starting fresh new lives with their singleness or with their um, looking for connection and uh, intimacy big changes have been on the cards over the last two years because of this cycle so let's wind back the clock a bit back in July 2021 Venus and Mars made a conjunction over here in the sign of Leo they came together and they came together in the usual way it happens which is Venus I'll give you a demonstration down here Venus chuffing along through the sky who is faster than Mars brum, 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 comes along and conjuncts Mars and keeps moving then beyond Mars because she's the faster planet so it's Venus who catches Mars in the sky being the faster planet and that's how it occurred back in July 2021 but then seven months later remember usually it's a 24 month period before they meet up again in the sky seven months later in February and March 2022 in the sign of Cap where are we? Capricorn in the sign of Capricorn Venus and Mars met together so it was only seven months since they'd been together the last time and this was an odd occurrence at the time because at that time Venus had just been going through a retrograde cycle and she'd just come out of retrograde motion and was putting very slowly through the through the zodiac and Mars at that point was actually moving faster than she was so at that conjunction in 2022 February March it was Mars who actually caught up with Venus and then kept moving beyond her this tango that they had back then lasted for two months because it um, within that two month time frame Venus caught up with Mars and started speeding up and chuffing off beyond Mars again anyhow um, but the cycle began with a conjunction of Mars with Venus they moved together through the horoscope and then Venus took off and left Mars for dead <laughs> um, but it was a different cyclical beginning at that point so 
Venus, having just moved out of retrograde, was moving slower and then sped up uh, as their conjunction progressed through February, March. So that was, as I've illustrated, very unusual. You know, it was only seven months since they'd last embraced and normally their tete-a-tetes occur at roughly 24-month intervals. Now we're actually 24 months on from when that unusual conjunction of Venus-Mars occurred back in the sign of Capricorn in early 2022. That old cycle is now finished. It's now complete. And we begin a new cycle this week. So that unusual cycle over the last two years that's been playing out began in 2022, early in 2022, and it's been playing out ever since. That's why we've seen so many huge relationship changes, divorces, people finding their soulmates, twin flames, loves that only come once in a lifetime. Now Venus is back to the normal pattern of catching Mars from this week onwards. However, what has been established under this old cycle that's finishing up this week is something unique and rare. And for many people, it's a once in a lifetime experience. So I just ask you now, my friends, what has been unfolding in your love life since the union began uh, of this cycle back in 2022? It's now wrapping up. It's now complete. The opportunities it bought are now closed and finished with. And uh, it may have left you with many uh, life changes that you never saw coming that came out of the blue. And you look back at the last two years of your life and you go, wow, I'm in a totally different place, totally different experience, totally different life stage than I was two years ago because of this conjunction of Venus and Mars. It's quite amazing. And for many of us, and this is what we're going to be breaking down for the All Signs Breakdown very shortly, for many of us, this conjunction of Venus and Mars is going to establish a new cycle that could bring some very exciting and wonderful occurrences for us in the coming two years before they meet again. But I'll talk about that when we get to the All Signs Breakdown. Then on the 23rd of February in Australian time and the 22nd of February in uh, sort of American time, we have Mercury moving into the sign of Pisces. Now, quite frankly, I'm tired of seeing so many memes saying that Mercury in Pisces is a combination for not being smart. Intelligence is not always found in the logical, in the conservative, in the conventional and in the predictable this is actually a beautiful combination. Even though Mercury is in its considered to be in its fall because it's opposite a sign that it rules, which is Virgo, so it's considered to be in fall that way, this combination is a beautiful combination and it's often found in the charts of the poets, the artists, the spiritual intuitives. It's, a, it's in the charts of the gentle communicators, the listeners, the warm conversationalists, so get ready, my dear friends, for this transit. This month, we're going to enjoy our thoughts. Mercury rules our thoughts, turning towards more boundaryless things, more spiritual things, poetic things, romantic things, creative things. And believe me when I say that's going to feel like a breath of fresh air that we all need right now. Thanks to Plu uh, not Pluto, thanks to Mercury moving through Pisces. Then on the 24th of February for everybody in the world, there's going to be a full moon in Virgo at five degrees. So the moon will be at five degrees opposite the sun in Pisces at five degrees and we get a full moon. Now every month, my friends, I give a full moon all signs breakdown and a new moon all signs breakdown for my Patreon family. If you haven't checked out the Patreon family, I just encourage you to do so because it's a wonderful place where you can connect with others, where we can all learn more astrology together, usually through the phases of the moon and through regular uh, monthly teaching sessions that I give through my Patreon page. It's a fabulous uh, resource if you want to know more about astrology and you, you, you appreciate or enjoy the, the way I deliver my uh, astrological knowledge. So do check that out. The link's in the description below and get the update on what this full moon in Virgo has in store for you. Now, finally this week, we're going to see on the 25th of February in Australia and the 24th of February in um, the USA, we're going to see Venus making a square to Jupiter. So Jupiter's over here in the fixed sign of Taurus, making a square to Venus in the fixed sign of Aquarius. 
these two planet planets, even though this is a hard aspect, as it's called, when we have a 90 degree square angle, these two planets give us a lighter hard aspect than malefic planets do when they make a square. So it's actually a great, a great aspect for good times and for having fun, a good energy for generosity, for being optimistic and like glass half full perspective on the world. But as with all Jupiter hard aspects, do be wary of overdoing it. Venus is pleasures, Venus is luxuries, fashion, food, and Jupiter in a hard aspect like this is extravagance, you know, over the topness. You spend too much uh, when you go out on a shopping spree or you, you know, eat out for dinner and you, you just end up feeling like a balloon because you've just glutted yourself on delicious delicacies. So also, my friends, I would make sure that you know what is in your bank account before you spend in the week ahead. And watching your waistline is also a good thing to do. Socializing, though, and friendships can really flourish under this energy. So relax and enjoy the beautiful connections that are in your life under this influence. And now we're going to move to the All Signs breakdown for the Venus-Mars conjunction that's occurring on the 20... Um, the 22nd, I'm going to go with the Australian time um, from now on uh, for the rest of this reading. So on the 22nd, we've got the conjunction of Venus-Mars at six degrees of Aquarius. And naturally enough, we're going to start the All Signs Breakdown with Aquarius. Aquarius rising, Aquarius sun, Aquarius moon. Now, this is going to be particularly potent if your um, ascendant degree happens to be at six degrees then you'll really feel this conjunction of Venus-Mars. In fact, it could herald some sort of new relationship beginning for you going forward for the next two years. For single people, that might mean that somebody new is going to come into your life at some point over the next two years. For uh, married people, it could be a refresher of your committed partnership or a reinvigoration of your committed partnership. It's a brand new cycle with love and sex and relationship that's particularly personal for you Aquarian people. So it could change your behaviors and your attitudes, this conjunction of Venus and Mars. It could make you more assertive, um, more desirous, your, your you know, libido could be really driven up in some way or heightened in some way over the next two years because of this conjunction falling in your first house of the body. This conjunction is one of desire, um, uh, excitement, adventure and passion when it comes to, to sex and love and intimacy. And here in the house of the body, it's your body that's going to be heightened by that. You will have a greater desire level. Your personal magnetism, Aquarius people, can be um, enhanced as well because this is a very magnetizing conjunction. People with Venus-Mars conjunction in their natal chart are often very magnetic, attractive kinds of personalities, kinds of people. So that can affect you as well. You might be, um, the first house is how you want to be treated. And you might, over, because of the, this conjunction forming in your first house, you might desire to be uh, desired now. You might be looking for opportunities to receive passion into your life. And not just sexual passion, but it could be creative passion. You might notice that there's a bubbling up of creative thought and creative um you know, production, you know, you're doing more art than you ever did before, or you're making more music, or you're learning new songs or something. It's, it's very much um, how you want to experience the world, um, which is seen through the first house. And in this case, we're setting up a new cycle of experiencing love, passion, and creativity for ourselves. Um, this is also the house of how we initiate things. And so for many of us, there could be really... Um, uh, a, a, a sort of a, a a beginning of a new cycle with initiating things with more self-assertion because um, Venus and Mars enhance one another when they're together actually so you are able to um, initiate new things in your life new relationships new business ideas new creative ventures you can initiate them with a lot more self-assertion 
But also the Venus component here allows you to initiate new things with more cooperation from others, more support from others, you know. So you can you put those two hand in hand now. It's kind of a rare combination to be able to be assertive and at the same time get the support and backing of other people. So if you need to start something new, you know, a new venture, uh, a new opportunity, a new relationship, you have the you know the the willpower to make it happen and the backing of other people around you to cause it to flourish so that is really quite exciting and the final thing that i want to mention with this combination for our, our aquarius people is that venus mars conjunctions cause us to be more direct and more straight up about what we want and we can really cultivate under this energy the willpower to get what we want and with this combination forming in the first house you have the um, the willpower to create the body that you want over the next two years so you might start a new diet or an exercise regime or something like that and be able to, or, or just simply change you know your wardrobe or your makeup or your hairstyle or the look the um, the impression that you're giving the world can change and you can create it and mold it to be whatever you want because this gives you more willpower and ability to make your look and your aura and your presence be whatever you desire it to be. So my Aquarius friends, I would encourage you, you know, you can sit down perhaps this week during this transit and envision for yourself what, what kind of image do you want to present to the world? Do you want to present the image of somebody who is a um, a fighter and a go-getter and someone who is aggressively achieving in the world or do you want to present the image of somebody who who brings more beauty to the world more grace more more refinement to the world define what you want your image to be because with this cycle resetting itself in the first house of you and what motivates you and how you want to be treated and how you present yourself in the world now is the chance to set up a whole new way of doing that to turn over a new leaf with the impression that you can give to people and with the way you um you show up let's say in the world as well and you can be more direct as i said and more straight up about uh, how you about initiating new things um, you can be more direct and straight up with your behaviors this is the house of you you yourself Aquarius can just be real I mean Aquarian people are generally this way anyway but um, the, the Venus Mars conjunction enhances that you can just you know say it as it is what you see is what you get no pretense no hidden agendas just straight up this is me this is what I want this is what I want to, uh, to go out and achieve in life so quite an exciting transit, Aquarius. Lots to look forward to with this new cycle beginning in your um, first house of you and how you show up in the world. Thank you, Aquarius. Moving along now, we want to move into Pisces. Pisces rising, Pisces sun or Pisces moon, people. How is the conjunction of Venus Mars in your 12th house going to be affecting you in the next two years? Well, for Pisces people, the 12th, or for everybody actually, the 12th house is all about our inner insecurities, our self-destructive behaviors. It's, a, it's about self-denial and self-sabotage. It's, you know, all these things that hold us back from achieving our, our greatest vision, our greatest ideal in life. And with Venus-Mars conjunction, it's saying we're going to need to take some time to look at where we ruin our own relationships our own partnerships and perhaps for many of I'm probably speaking quite harshly here but for many of we Pisces people we're going to need to t learn to take some self-responsibility over the next two years for where we destroy the relationships in our life now that can be intimate sexual relationships it could also be partnerships of other kinds as well but mostly this is the two lovers so it does speak to love sex and intimate relationship situations so Pisces during this week especially under the energy of this conjunction which is setting up a brand new cycle for the next two years take some time to think about or journal about where you have self-destructive behaviors in relationship that impact your relationship and that let it down where do your thoughts run away with themselves Pisces where do your thoughts sort of you know you go down the rabbit hole of thinking certain ways and then you're judging the people around you let's just face it Pisces people oftentimes can be 
judgy because our shadow hidden side of who we are is the sign of Virgo. Um, the, the qualities that we, we often don't realize that we, we have or we ignore or pretend aren't there are the Virgo sort of um, self-critical qualities or, or, or critical qualities, the perfectionist seeking qualities. But back to 12th house energy here, like I said, we might need to sort of um, stop being critical of other people and start being reflective on ourselves. Where are our insecurities relationally letting us down and causing us to or causing impact of a negative variety on our relationships? If you can do this, if you can find out where you are sabotaging your relationships by doing some reflection, Pisces, you're going to be just so far ahead of the eight ball with this um, with, with this energy for the next two years. You'll do the work now, this week, and it won't have to be done for you over the coming two years. Take responsibility for where you let yourself down in relationship. That's what this is really speaking to here in the 12th house. Sometimes the 12th house has to do with letting go. It's a moksha house, a liberation house. So for some Pisces people, they might be, uh, you know, if you're in a relationship that's not feeling particularly healthy or flourishing or, um, you know, you're in a, a relationship that um, is lacking in some way and, and you're just, you've been feeling like, oh, I just want to get out and this is not me, it's not right, then a letting go can occur because it's about being liberated from something that's not working. That is a 12th house energy. So you might find um, over the next two years, Pisces, that as this cycle is being set up, you know, you, you begin to dissolve or disassociate from a relationship perhaps. Um, that can be one of the ways this, this manifests. Now, it may not be that this is what is going on relationally. It could be to do with financial matters. Maybe you're, dis, you know, disassociating or um, dissolving some material things out of your life because they're no longer serving you and you need liberation from those material circumstances that are bringing you down. Um, it also uh, pertains to what I was speaking about a moment ago, where you self-sabotage and cause uh, a loss of material success or a loss of financial success. You need to do a review of that as well. Venus is those things. 12th house is where we self-sabotage and Mars is about taking action. It's time. It's time, Pisces, for us to take action on where we are letting ourselves down financially and materially as well as relationally, which I've talked about. So do the introspective work. 12th house is introspection. 12th house is looking at our psychological self and seeing what's there and I encourage you to do so this week and make changes practice acceptance where you can take responsibility in other areas is very important um, now there can be I mean Pisces Mars sorry not Pisces <laughs> Venus Mars energy in the 12th house is the house of karma and past lives so for many Pisces people you might be experiencing in the next two years some karmic relationship that comes into your life it could also represent somebody coming back from earlier this life you know like um, a relationship you had in high school might come back up again uh, now when you're in your 50s or your 60s and you get in touch again with your boyfriend from when you were 16 and boom <laughs> it's all on again this is where the past comes back and having a conjunction of the two lovers in the sky in the house of the past, not, not only karma, past lives, but the past life that we've experienced in this incarnation, it comes back to us. So some of you Pisces people might be having a, a relationship come back from long ago. Or you might be having relationship experiences that you don't even realize are actually past life experiences that need to be wound up or the loose ends tied up or completed in some way. So you're doing that in this lifetime. But this is what this is all about as well. Some of you might look to have relationships that are more private or secluded. Some of you might be... <laughs> let's cover all topics here Pisces some of you might be having um, relationships that are secretive and behind the scenes you know affairs um, but it doesn't have to be you know affairs that sort of thing for for some Pisces people it might be that you know you have to get married quietly for some reason you know that you know other people can't know just yet you know maybe down the track in a couple of years you'll be able to tell people but there might be a reason to keep a marriage secret or a commitment or a relationship secret for um 
for just reasons. You know, years ago, years and years ago, I dated a guy who was going through a court case with his ex-wife and he was very much like, we've got to keep our dating secret because, you know, if she finds out, then it's going to be hell for me in the in the courts. So we didn't tell anybody and that was fine. <laughs> it didn't work out anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, but that's the kind of thing. So some of you Pisces people might be having secretive relationships um, or connections. For Pisces people, there's so much to say with this placement of the conjunction of Venus and Mars. This is the house of our dreams. Not only our night dreams, but our inner dreams, our visions, our ideals. And for many Pisces people, under this influence, you're going to be having a vision and a dream of what you want relationship to look like. So it, it, it can actually serve you well to sort of picture it. You know, do go into the, the visualization practices. Uh, we all know how to do that and see what it looks like for you to be in the relationship that you really want to be in Pisces. This is a healthy way to use this energy. Um, and that, that goes for whether you're in a, a relationship currently or you're single and looking for a relationship. You know, if, if the relationship that you're currently in is not satisfying, then visualize and put it out there to the universe through prayer and meditation. I want my relationship to, to look like this and be fulfilling in this way. If you're single, put it out to the universe through prayer and meditation and visualization. I want to be in a relationship, if you do want to be in a relationship, I want to be in a relationship that looks like this. And you can do the same with other um, Venus-Mars things, you know, with, with entrepreneurism. Mars is to be an entrepreneur um, and Venus is to make money. So, you know, how do you want to make money? Visualize it. Give it out to the universe through prayer and meditation and visualization now. How can you make money of your own accord independently? That's Venus-Mars conjunction. Um, you might be, you know, how do you want to show up in the world materially? Put that into a visualization and give it over to the universe at this time. Now, there's so much more I could go on and say about this. this the 12th house is a fascinating house and this is a really fascinating conjunction. But I'll leave it at that, otherwise we'll be here all day. Um, doing. Oh, one last thing I will say, for many of you Pisces people, you're going to get opportunities over the next couple of years to travel with partners um, and potentially also to have some holidays and escapism and rest with a partnership, with um, an intimate connection. So, you know, let's, let's talk dirty weekends and things like that that's what we're talking about and that's the fun side of this combi um, combination so enjoy Pisces you deserve it thank you one and all okay Aries Aries rising Aries sun and Aries moon people for you the conjunction of Venus and Mars Aries is occurring in the 11th house of the horoscope and so this is a house of being profitable and gainful and when you've got this combination Mars as I've just been talking about for Pisces people is entrepreneurism and Venus is making money how we can make money well here you can be very gainful through being entrepreneurial and and starting up something new Mars is to instigate some sort of new creative idea and it's through the, doing those sorts of things that you can make money, that you can be profitable and create more gainfulness for yourself. Um, it's also through networking that you can create more profitability and gainfulness with your entrepreneurial endeavors and your ideas. And it could also be artistic and creative ideas that, that could bring you money as well because Venus-Mars conjunction really heightens our creativity and our ability to produce something new and different and exciting. And so here in the house of gainfulness and rewards and networking, it's that creativity and sharing it with your networks that could bring you um, some sort of successful profitability. And that could happen at any time, not just this week, but over the next two years, because we are setting up a new cycle with the Venus-Mars conjunction. Now, Venus-Mars conjunction also increases our personal magnetism, and it's with your friendship groups and wider circles. It's on the internet that your magnetism might be seen. This is 11th house things, is, is personal magnetism, sorry, 11th house things is internet, it's networks, it's big groups of friends, and this is where um, your personal magnetism can increase. So you might grow in popularity on the internet in some way or with, with media or that kind of thing. Um, you might grow in popularity in terms of being in a uh, some sort of group because groups are seen through 
the 11th house. This is political parties, organizations, clubs. So if you have been aspiring to a leadership position in, a, in an organization or a club or a group or a political party, well, it might be just the, ne the next two years might be the, the prime time when, you, you know, the energy is ripe for you to be successful that way because of the, the establishment of this cycle in your 11th house in the coming week. Very, very exciting. Um, this is also the house of the wealth that we can make from our contribution to the world. And Venus Mars is the partnership of the two lovers. So it could be through some sort of collaboration um, together with someone else that you make some sort of success in the world and create wealth in the world. Um, Mars is young men, Venus is young women. So really it speaks to the collaboration of young men and women being able to make uh, wealth through offering something up to the world could be some form of creativity um, or it could be anything really that you, that you want to offer to the world um, it's through perhaps for some people Aries people it might be through relationship matters that you are able to make some sort of profitability and success in the world maybe you start an internet dating site um, maybe you uh, host a like a, let's face it and, and I speak from experience people are bloody sick of those internet dating sites they absolutely suck and I hear my children saying all the time oh, I, I don't want to use those things they're terrible um, I want it to go back to the way it was in the 90s mum when people met in person and so on and that takes a lot of courage which is Mars and and Venus which is showing up and putting on your most beautiful self um, it takes a bit of that and so for some of you I forget what I, where I began with this particular thought stream, but um, you know it, there could be uh, the opportunity for you to establish some some form of making money, perhaps, or business uh, entrepreneurial event that has to do with dating and romance in an old-fashioned sort of way. Not that Venus Mars is old-fashioned; it's not. In fact, in Aquarius, it's very futuristic. So yes, you might be establishing a dating site and what have you, but I do notice that out there in the collective, there is a lot of momentum in, in single groups, not just in my age group, but um, in younger people as well, to move away from the, the um, lack of personal connection that those horrible dating apps have. So we will see. We will see what the next two years of this cycle brings up, but you might be able to make money through it somehow or other, my friends. This is the house of our dreams and our desires and our ambitions. It represents how we can achieve what we want in the world. And Venus Mars is a very direct and straight up kind of energy. It says it as it is, and especially in the sign of Aquarius. So it's through being, you know, straight up saying, I want that. I desire that. You know, this is what I would like. Being honest, not you know, sort of skirting around the matter or dilly-dallying or pretending one thing when you really want another. No, you'll be straight up and honest about what you want in terms of your dreams, your desires, your ambitions, your wishes. And when you behave that way, that's when it can come true for you. You also have the willpower to get what you want in terms of your dreams and desires. Now, this may not play out in the week ahead, but you might establish something now with this conjunction of Venus and Mars that flourishes for you over the next two years in that way. You assert yourself now. You, um, you show up and you, you say it as it is and you take action and you instigate something new regarding a dream or a goal that you have. And lo and behold, it starts the ball rolling. You may not see the fruition until we have a Venus-Mars opposition that'll come in about a year's time. And when that happens, you can get the fruit of what you establish now. But take action, my friends, on your dreams and goals. Listen to your heart. What's it saying? What do you need to do? What action do you need to take to achieve what you want in the world? Do it. This energy has your back to make it flourish for you in time. This is an Upachaya house, which means it gets better with time, better as things roll along. So establish something now and you're going to reap the rewards over the next two years at some stage. So that's what I would suggest for is playing out for our Aquarius friends. For Taurus, Taurus rising, Taurus sun, Taurus moon people, you are having an angular manifestation of Venus Mars conjunction in the 10th house. This is the realm where you're beginning a brand new cycle, turning over a new leaf. And this new leaf has to do with Venus Mars things, which can be money, love, artistic endeavors, and assertion. So it can be very advantageous 
in the 10th house. You have the ability now to start a new cycle with asserting yourself in your career. Because when Venus and Mars are in conjunction, it's kind of bringing the best of the two energies together. Um, and Mars is self-assertion and self-will. And Venus is cooperation and collaboration. And so here you can assert yourself in your career space to get what you want in your career. And you'll also get the cooperation of people around you, particularly the cooperation of bosses, leaders, people in authority over you. So go and tell them, I want a pay rise. I want a promotion. This is where under this conjunction, you might see that they will cooperate and meet you halfway. Fantastic. Now, you may not see this immediately this week because after all, the conjunction is setting up a brand new cycle that's going to play out over the next two years. But what you set in motion now regarding career, promotion, rising up in the world can play out to your benefit and get you what you want over the course of the next two years. Uh, also, the approach that we can take to achieving what we want in the world is seen through the 10th house. And with this conjunction forming here, it's through being direct and straight up and saying it as it is and being totally honest. That's how you get what you want. So, you know, don't pretend that, you know, oh, I didn't really want that promotion anyway. No, say, look, I was really going for that, that promotion. I didn't get it, but you know what? I did really want it. I'm going to let my boss know I wanted that and to keep me in mind if there's anything else that comes up in the future. Be honest, be real, be straight up. You also have the willpower and the drive now to get what you want career-wise and out there in the world as well. So, um, you know, take that step. Don't be afraid. Use your courage. Mars is courage. Um, this is, as I said, the house of what we need to do to get more respect in the world and to have more success. And we need to be this way. We need to incorporate those Mars-Venus attributes in the week ahead if we're to see any flourishing come over the next two years from that from this time now you will have an increase in personal magnetism we all will feel the energy of mars venus giving us an increase in personal magnetism um, on this date which is the 22nd of february and that is going to be felt most keenly for taurus people in your career environment so when you show up at work or on the internet or wherever your career happens to be based people are going to be like wow look at them you know this is an energy for increasing your popularity and increasing the recognition people have for you because there's this it's not just magnetism actually it's this sexy vibe it, and the word sexy means something is desirable that's what sexy means it doesn't mean literal sex it means being desirable and so there is this desirability factor this magnetism that you will be carrying now um, with this conjunction in the 10th house in the workplace and that can that can be what gives you the edge Taurus friends um, in a in an interview for a promotion or when you're going for a job or you're putting your videos out there on YouTube to be seen because it's part of your career that is where um, you might be these places of work these places of career are where you might see your magnetism and popularity therefore flourishing so um, if you're involved in any creative endeavors you know maybe you write poetry or music or you, you make films or something like whatever you do that's creative if you're involved in those sorts of careers wow you're about to start a really beneficial cycle Taurus um, the next two years could be very empowering for you and very rewarding for you if you're involved in artistic careers so listen to what your heart is telling you about what to produce and how to design what you're doing and so on and how to create what you're doing because you'll be well tuned into what's going to succeed for you now and you'll know what's going to be popular with the masses over the next two years if you tune in to what your heart is telling you creatively this week. Very, very exciting. Now, the 10th house also has connections to fathers and father figures. And here with this conjunction, it's your father or a father figure that might be experiencing the energy of Venus Mars. They might suddenly be filled with a lot of passion. They, their libido might be skyrocketing when you know they've been sitting back on their rocking chair for the last 20 years. So don't be surprised if you hear, you know, your dad who's been on his own for 10 years suddenly has got a new love in his life. That's what this can bring about is um, relationship issues for your father. Um, they might have increased personal magnetism themselves and they might be feeling very desirable 
stepping out in the world, trying to meet somebody new. I'm thinking about fathers where they're single, not so much fathers where they're still with your mum, of course. Um, your father, you know, if they're not in a single situation, they might simply be, you know, more self-assertive now and getting the cooperation of your mum as well at this time or whoever they are in partnership with, of course. They can be, father figures can be more direct and straight up about what they want in life. They probably have more willpower to go after what they want in life now too and even father figures can be expressing more creativity than usual under this influence too. So yeah, if it's not happening for you, my friends, it's probably happening in the life of a father or a father figure. Thank you, Taurus. All right, Gemini. Gemini rising, Gemini sun, Gemini moon, my little mutable Geminis. I'm going to stop you from walking. We know that it's so funny that my astrology wheel, Gemini and Sagittarius like to move around a bit. And so I have to put this stopper there. And Gemini and Sagittarius quite literally no surprises, are the restless energies that like to move around a bit, funnily enough. Okay, so Gemini rising, sun or moon, sees the conjunction of the two lovers in the sky on the 22nd of February, forming here in Aquarius, your ninth house, one of the houses of blessing. Now, I'll start off by saying, if you are a Gemini person who is awaiting or looking for or actively trying to find your second life partner and I'm talking about committed life partners I'm not talking about just boyfriends or girlfriends um, I'm talking about you know put a ring on the finger um, move in together establish your home together that kind of stuff committed life partner if you're looking for that then this cycle being started now by Venus Mars is going to set you up for a, um, the potential for love to come of a second life partner variety so brand new cycle beginning for sex and love, romance and relationship. You know, you probably have a strong desire now this week. You'll feel that desire for that partner in your life, for that sparkly intimacy, that exciting butterflies in the tummy feeling, that sense of adventure and passion with a partner. You'll be hungry for it if you are a Gemini person looking for a second life partner. I point that out. It could also be that if you are in sort of a, a situation where you're dating a second life partner or something, you might notice that they get more Venus Mars energy in their life. They might be being more creative. They might be being more self-assertive in a very diplomatic, uh, harmonious way now. They might be being more straight up and direct about what they hunger for and desire in life. So you might see this energy playing out through them as well. This house has to do with celebrations and usually celebrations of a legal variety but Venus Mars conjunction um, in the house of celebrations often pertains to marriage and weddings so for some of you uh, Gemini people you might be attending a wedding at this time you might get engaged at this time you might be getting married at this time that's what this conjunction can signify you might also um, start to see love and money, which are Venus ruled things, and your entrepreneurial endeavors and your cre courageous endeavors from a more philosophical point of view. You know, you might see things, um, you know, looking for, for meaning and purpose in relationships or meaning and purpose beyond the usual that you, for, for how you're spending your money. You know, you might be looking to spend your money on things that are uh, more philosophical, more. Uh, purposeful more meaningful instead of frivolous things now this is also an energy of being straight up and direct about what we want in life and in the ninth house it's about having meaning and purpose this conjunction can bring clarity about what you want to achieve where you want to go I say it all the time the ninth house is associated with Sagittarius the energy of the centaur center pointing its arrow off into the future looking ahead that's what this energy is all about the ninth house and so you will be feeling a lot of clarity about where you want to head and what you've got to do to get there now too so it's setting up a new cycle of purpose and meaning that's going to play out over the next two years you might decide my Gemini friends you know that you need you know you want to go drive trucks in the mines in Australia because there's good money to be made there and if you do that for another five years then you're going to be set for life. 
So you, what have you got to do? Well, you're looking ahead at where you want to be in the future. And so what do you need to do to get there? Well, you need to get a truck driver's license. So under this Venus-Mars energy conjunction, looking ahead, um, being clear about what we want, having the willpower to go get what we want, you, you're like looking to go get your truck driver's license so that you can go work in the mines and make a lot of money and set yourself up for life. That's what this energy is all about. It's about being clear-minded. It's about taking action towards your future goals and, um, and where you want to be. Um, this is also the house of our beliefs and for many of you Gemini people you're, you might find that your beliefs around love and relationship are changing because Venus Mars conjunction is ending an old cycle and beginning a new one you're turning over a new leaf with your beliefs around love and relationship and also your beliefs around financial matters as well so particularly for Gemini people, this energy is about getting a new approach to dealing with finances and love and uh, also creative endeavors, I would all say as, also say as well. So um, you can find now that by resetting your budget or taking action to achieve something financially in the future, you might find a sense of freedom. You might find a sense of liberation and truth because that's what the ninth house is all about. This is why it's one of the most blessed houses in the horoscope because it's all about how we find our freedom, how we find meaning, um, how we find our liberation and truth. And it's through doing these Venus Mars things this week that you can find meaning and liberation and truth. Especially, like I said, with Venus Mars things like financial matters or um, entrepreneurism and so forth. So enjoy this turning over a new leaf. This is also a house of good karma. So you might be experiencing some good karma this week um, as a result of Venus-Mars conjunctions as well. This can be like you, you've got an increase in personal magnetism with Venus-Mars conjunction. And because your magnetism is heightened, um, maybe you encounter somebody from the past, you know, um, and, and, and they maybe it was somebody from a past life and you know they've come back into your life now to restore some good karma into your life that's what the ninth house has to do with that good karmic energy and so because you're all magnetized you know and you've, you've got this desirable energy this person shows up is attracted to you drawn to you and brings that good karma into your life it's one of the ways that that can play out um what else can I say about this position? This is um, a house of eureka moments, those light bulb boom moments where you have a, an awareness, a deep understanding, a deep resonance with something. Something is made, as I said, clear to you. And you might get some sort of revelation about a love situation this week. So, you know, you let's use a couple of examples um, you know you, you suddenly gain some clarity about the relationship that you're in you know maybe you've been dating somebody for a couple of years now and you this this conjunction forms in the house of eureka moments and you're like you know what I just love that person I'm gonna, I want to marry that person what am I doing dilly dallying around and just sort of keeping them dangling on a string I want to be with that person I don't want anyone else to get them I'm gonna marry them it's like, oh, light bulb, what have I been doing? That realization energy could be that you wake up and realize, hang on, this person isn't the one for me after all. Um, that can happen too. So you get a, an a, epiphany <laughs> about a relationship situation. Maybe you realize that somebody from your past was, you know, the right person for you and just happens they're still single. So you go back and, um, and try again, you know. There is an energy of epiphany regarding all sorts of relationship situations here with this energy. And there, because it's a, a conjunction that brings a desire for true sparkly intimacy, excitement, adventure, passion, um, you'll, do, you'll take uh, action now to make that happen. And um, because it's a house of good karma, it could be just the thing to really bring a lot more flourishing and blessing into your life, Gemini. So I hope you enjoy my Gemini friends, the conjunction in the house of blessing. Cancer, Cancer rising, Cancer sun and Cancer moon people. Well, ho, 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 Venus, Mars conjunction in the eighth house. 
Are you ready to get jiggy with it, Cancer? Because that's what this is all about. This is a conjunction that brings a desire for true sparkly intimacy, excitement, passion, adventure, sexiness. It's all on the cards in the house of sex. Now, I have to just spell out that the eighth house is a house of our sexuality, whereas sort of the, the, the fun side of sex is the fifth house. Um, and it can also be the 12th house as well. There are a few different places that have um, to do with it for various reasons. But the 8th house is how we are in terms of our sexuality, okay? So here you're going to be more excited. In fact, you are setting up a whole new two-year cycle of an, you know, a heightened libido, a passionate um, you know, nature for intimacy. And so this is going to benefit and bless um, so many cancer people's lives if you're in an intimate relationship. It gives sparkles to it. It gives the fireworks happening in the bedroom because of this. Your sexuality, your libido is enhanced by this conjunction in the eighth house for you. And it could last the next <laughs> two years. How fantastic. The, there can be some action that you take around your sexual expression and sexual experience that could keep bubbling and flourishing and come to a full fruition in about a year's time when we have a Mars Venus opposition and that we have that fruiting energy. Um, now if you're a single person you might start you know you might really feel hungry because of this conjunction for an intimate relationship in your life where maybe beforehand you were like a bit nonplussed but the you know the, the energy within us is amped up for more intimate connection and of course sex is one way of being intimate but we can have intimate relationships of a, a heartfelt spiritual nature as well very eighth house as well so all of those dynamics you know the, the emotional connection that that resonance with another human being at a very deep level that mightn't be sexual but that's what we're talking about here is that intimate connection with others that bond that forms with other people at a very deep level and so you'll be passionate about finding that in life if you haven't already got something like that so you might find that because of this conjunction especially in the sign of Aquarius because of that desire that's now present you join an internet dating site or you go and you know perhaps uh, join some singles groups Aquarius is a bit connected with the 11th house energy of being involved in a group you go and join a singles dating group or something go to places where you might meet people so that you can ultimately down the road in this two-year cycle find that passion find that excitement find that love really really um, fun and quite interesting energy that might actually shake you out of a rut and get you out of your comfort zone so very exciting now for some of you who are in relationships you might find that this as I've just said shakes you out of a rut with your partner you know maybe look maybe your sex life is fantastic maybe this is going to happen in a different way maybe you feel like you're just not connecting mentally at an intimate level any longer and so maybe you and your partner decide you know what we let's study something together let's join Ksenia's Royal Stars Academy let's study astrology together and gradually over the next two years you begin to have a deep intimate connection with a partner that comes from a mental activity Aquarius um, in um, some kind of online forum for example that's another way that can manifest um, you know but but learning something new with a partner or uh, taking a course in love poetry or something like that doing something with your partner to create more intimacy is a great way to use this energy establish something now under this conjunction of Venus Mars on the 22nd of February and you will begin a whole new cycle of understanding and knowing and going deeper and deeper and deeper with your partner that could play out for the next two years in a very beautiful way my cancer friends very very exciting I find that very exciting anyway what do you want like what do you want your relationship intimacy to look like go for it now this is an energy Venus Mars conjunction of being straight up about what we want and having the willpower to make it happen you know the the, the self-assertion to bring it into being so what do you want your intimate love life to look like visualize it go for it create it you can do this now under the energy of this week with Venus Mars conjunction you're very much this is a house of 
fast changes. And so you'll very much be turning over a new leaf this week with regard to these things, but also with regard to money. Venus is money. So how are you handling money? Like this is the house of other people's money, actually. And if you're in a position where you handle other people's money, maybe you invest money for other people or you're a tax accountant or something like that. Uh, maybe you're um, somebody who um, handles wills and the distribution of wills you know that kind of thing you're handling other people's money um, you might be turning over a new leaf with those sorts of endeavors now starting a whole new cycle the old cycles finished you know maybe you've spent two years dealing with um, grandma's will and finally it's all sorted and it's finished and it's done and you start a new cycle this week okay <laughs> all sorted all finished I don't have to deal with that anymore finishes up maybe you're starting a whole new cycle this week with you know uh, investing you know, putting, you know, gathering in investors and, and managing their money for them in a new way like you've never done before. This is the house of other people's money, other people's resources, the house of what we receive from other people. Now that I've talked about it being money, but it could be moral support from other people, emotional support, physical support, as well as financial support, material goods, inheritances, wills and payouts and that sort of thing. And so it's turning over a new leaf with all of that sort of thing. You're getting new, refreshed moral support this week. It begins a whole new cycle of moral support from others or emotional support from others in some way. Something in those realms is beginning. Um, creativity is, in height, is heightened now. And if you are a, a, some sort of mystic or a healer or a shaman or Reiki practitioner, if you're an astrologer, um, then you might get a lot of inspiration this week. The creativity that you put into those types of activities, eighth house activities, is heightened. Let's say you are a practicing astrologer. Well, your creativity for how you're sharing your knowledge with your clients and your, you know, your audience, it, it's enhanced now. Mars Venus brings more creativity and it brings it to the realms of eighth house things very exciting if you work in mystical realms esoteric realms and so forth um, now as i said this is a house of fast changes and venus mars is the two lovers so not only is this representing sex um, but it represents relationships you might have some very big changes to relationships this week for some, it could be an ending. For some, it could be a new beginning. But for most people, it's going to be a refreshing. Um, it's starting a new cycle of relationship, not just intimacy. I've talked about that, but this is about relationship in general. So some single people, because of this conjunction in the eighth house, might meet partners, intimate partners. Um, married partners might be revitalizing their um, their marriages um, for some people it's got to do with money there's a refreshing and a fast change that happens in your financial situation you go on this week from being you know absolutely broke with two cents in the bank to next week having a you know here's ten thousand dollars thank you very much and um, it could be like that it's fast changes because Mars is a fast energy the eighth house is a fast energy this is the house of receiving what we can receive. It's a very receptive, it's connected to Scorpio, we're a receptive sign. It's a water house, water sign, receptive energy. You can receive some sort of fast change financially because of Venus-Mars conjunction here. So there are a couple of the ways that this might be playing out for many of us who have um, this uh, strong energy forming in the eighth house. Um, one last thing that I do want to mention with this particular placement, it, it has to do with rebirth. And for many of you cancer people, it's your ability to assert yourself that might be getting a, a brand new boost and your ability to sort of own who you are because Mars is our willpower, Mars is our courage. And we can now assert ourselves. We can walk in our willpower and our courage with greater grace. Now, Venus is grace, Mars is courage and willpower here in the eighth house of being reborn. So we have a whole new way of asserting ourselves in the world, of putting our stamp on things, of pushing our agenda, if you like, in a way that is well received by others, where other people cooperate 
with our self-assertion. So this the eighth house is other people's support, as I've said. Um, and Venus-Mars conjunction brings your will getting the cooperation that it needs. Um, and there's a rebirthing of that. So it can be very good if you happen to, you know, especially in Aquarius, if you are wanting to establish a crowdfunding venture or a, like a Patreon style platform where people support you. This energy of Venus-Mars conjunction can increase your magnetism and make your, you know, your instigations out there in the world well received and seen through a gracious lens. So you can get what you want regarding the support that you need from other people in the world. So if you've been dabbling with the idea of some sort of YouTube monetize, um, not monetization, YouTube membership platform or a Patreon or a crowdfunding, like I said, this is the week to look at establishing it under this energy. It will give you blessing for the next two years. So keep that in mind, Cancer friends, if that's something that you've had in mind to instigate. Alrighty, thank you, Cancer. Leo, Leo rising, Leo sun and Leo moon people. Well, for you guys, this energy is forming in the sec not the second, the seventh house. And this is going to be very powerful for you, yes indeed. But also, I'll start out by saying that it's going to be very powerful for your lovers, your relationships. Now, this is the conjunction of the two lovers in the sky, but it's forming in the house of your partners. So your partner's level of desire, their libido, their excitement and passion is going to be really boosted under this conjunction this week. So, you know, you might... <laughs> You might be getting it on a bit more than usual because of this conjunction, my Leo friends. Make sure that you know you are ready because it could be quite fun. It's also a heightening of creativity in a house that has to do with uh, love and affection and connection. So, you know, there could be a lot of creative uh, endeavors in the bedroom, let's say, as well that you experience. Things that you know, I mean, Aquarius is an experiment of energy. You might be experimenting with with love making in some way. So, mm -mm, getting it on. Um, what else can we say about this energy? Well, it is the 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 house of everything that is opposite to us. So we might be noticing in our world around us, we're seeing people being direct and straight up about what they want. There's no sort of beating around the bush or pretending one thing and asking for another. You know, that no, no, no. People are going to be very straightforward now and they're going to say it as it is, this energy. This is the house of our audience, our clients, the public, other people, our partners. They're going to be very open and honest and real. Um, also, we'll notice people around us really asserting themselves and getting the cooperation that they want that they need, putting themselves forward. So your partner might be doing this. Your partner might be asserting themselves and getting your cooperation um, and collaboration in some area of life. But it could also be that you are, um, you're seeing your clients, your audience cooperating and collaborating with you in some way as well. That's another way this energy could play out for Leo people. This is a house, uh, hmm, I don't like referring to the law of attraction because, you know, it's a bit of, I'll just leave that there. I won't go into what I was going to say. Um, but look, it is a house connected to the idea of law of attraction, the kind of people that we attract into our life. And so we're going to attract very charismatic, magnetizing and desirable, sexy people into our life this week. That could be very fun, you know, to be around, you know, very sort of passionate people and adventurous people because of this sparkly energy occurring in the house of others. Um, this is also the mirror of ourself, this house. So it could be that this is what other people are perceiving in you, you know. Um, they are mirroring back, other people are mirroring back what we are putting out perhaps. And we are, might, might be feeling more magnetized, more sexy, more excited, more heightened libido, more sparkly, more fireworks coming off her aura kind of thing. Like it's all, mm, it's all going down. It can be a, like a very fun week in that sense. 
for our Leo people. This is also a house of um, agreements. It's a house of alliances and commitments and promises and vows and treaties, all those legal legalities that set things up. And for many Leo people, Mars Venus conjunction might see you forming sort of relational commitments, relational alliances and contractual alliances in some way. So some of you might be getting married, some of you might be moving in together, some of you might be, you know, opening a bank account together, that kind of thing. Doing something something of a, a legal or administrative nature that sets up a whole new cycle with a lover, for example. How we act in business dealings is something that we see, <clears throat> excuse me, from the seventh house as well. So it stands to reason with this conjunction of Venus Mars that many of you involved in business and trade and sales and negotiation might be being very assertive this week. But in doing so, you'll get cooperation, like I've already talked about. But you know, it, it pays to assert yourself in trade and sales, um, and you can get, you know, can get the results of what what you want now. Um, this doesn't mean that you, you are in a constant business situation. I'll, I'll give you an example. I recently have contacted somebody on Facebook Buy, Swap and Sell about buying a particular item and I had the audacity, <laughs> it's not usually my style, let me tell you, to suggest would you take $50 less than what you're trying to sell it for? Lo and behold, to my surprise, this person says, yes, we would. And I'm like, very well, I'll take it then. So <clears throat> that's what, <clears throat> sorry rubbing my throat that's what this conjunction is all about self-assertion saying what you want being direct and straight up in business and trade and buying and selling and getting it getting what you want so my friends jump on Facebook buy swap and sell this week because you could get a real bargain <laughs> enjoy lots of fun um, so this is a house of balance it's also a house of fairness so in having said that, <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, expect that you'll get, you know, something for nothing, but let's be fair. Let's be, you know, balanced in our approach to our business deals this week because you could be really be surprised by what comes up. Very good. And finally, for our Leo people, or maybe not finally, I've got a couple more things to say. <laughs> for our Leo people, this is the house of how, <clears throat> how we approach social situations. And so we might find ourselves in situations this week where we are required to be more direct and straight up and honest and self-assertive. But we're going to be able to do it easily with great diplomacy and, uh, and harmony. I will just say too, Leo people, you're very creative people. We know that. Leo, Leo people are often some of the most creative and creatively intelligent people out there. And Venus Mars conjunction in the house, uh, the seventh house, could make you being very creative with your love relationships, with your partnerships. You might even be collaborating with somebody on some creative endeavor, Leo. How exciting. You know, working together with someone else to produce some sort of very creative, wonderful outcome. You might even be partnering with someone on a financial matter as well. Taking action on financial matters is what Venus and Mars can bring about. And here in the house of other people and collaborations with other people, you might be collaborating on some financial endeavor that's going to pay off for you. And you might not see it pay off immediately. You might instigate or start something this week that pays off in about a year when we have a Mars-Venus opposition. The fruit, the full moonness of the Mars-Venus cycle. Or it might pay off in about two years. So there can be um, action taken this week in a collaborative endeavor that could really um, flourish for you um, over the coming two years at some point. So I love this energy. Enjoy my lovely Leo friends. Virgo, Virgo rising, Virgo sun and Virgo moon people puts the energy of Venus Mars conjunction. How's that going to go? Oh, that's going to stay into your... <laughs> into your sixth house. So um, this is where you're beginning a brand new cycle with love and sex and relationship. But I have to point out that the sixth house is a house of our victim mentality where we can, you know, um, feel like we've been hard done by. So in one sense, you're ending an old cycle of relationships. And it could be that that old cycle that's ending is you saying, 
you know, I've been feeling like a victim of relationships the last two years. I'm feeling like I've been let down. I'm feeling like I've been taken advantage of. Poor me, poor me, poor me. I've had so much adversity with relationships over the last, you know, two years of this cycle. And it might be that this week you say, enough, enough already, Virgo me. I've got to start being more positive. I've got to see the world glass half full and not be so critical of what I've experienced relationally. It, it is what it is. I need to accept it and move on. So I would encourage you to take that approach to whatever you've experienced um, relationally over the last two years and start, my friends, to move into a brand new cycle with positivity, with hope. I would suggest also, this is a house of service, how we can help heal and fix problems. Look at this energy of Mars Venus conjunction as, as, as a calling to find solutions to relationship problems, not to whine about them or be in a victim state, but find solutions. Okay, maybe it's been challenging in the marriage that you're in for some reason or another, maybe there've been problems and issues. What are the solutions that you can implement now? Take action. Mars Venus is to be straight up, to assert yourself, to use willpower to get what you want. And if you want problems in relationship to be fixed, now's the time to take action on that. If you are having um, issues with debt, the sixth house has to do with debt. Mars Venus is financial matters and it can re represent a brand new cycle, turning over a new leaf with financial issues. But Mars gives us the, the ability to take action on financial issues and financial matters. In the sixth house, the ability to take action on financial problems and debt problems. I encourage you now, you no more victim mentality, now is about taking action. I am going to take responsibility for where I'm at financially. Now that doesn't mean that your financial issues are going to all evaporate um, because of this conjunction. This is a house of hard work, but it does give you the clarity and the ability to ask for help and get the cooperation you need to resolve issues. So, you know, if there's somebody in your world who you can ask for help to sort out a relational issue or to sort out a financial disadvantage that you have or somebody that you can ask to help you, you know, increase your education so that you can be more employable and that sort of thing, then go ask for that assistance now. By being straight up and direct, Mars-Venus conjunction, you will get the cooperation that you need to resolve those issues of disadvantage and adversity. Go for it, my friends. This, this combination is there to support you. It's there to help you begin a whole new cycle and turn over a new leaf, make a new start with those things. Now, this is also a combination for increased personal magnetism. And when this is happening in the house of work and everyday work life, you might find that you just have more va va -voom in the workplace. You know, you, you're more popular in your workplace. People are coming to you, you know, can I buy you a coffee for morning tea? And you're like, yeah, and that's never happened before. There's just a magnetism, a desirability. People want to be around you in the workplace. I like this energy um, uh, at this level can be um, really helpful. Because you're feeling more magnetized, more desirable, you can attract greater opportunities to you in the workplace. Um, by workplace, that's if you're, I'm talking about if you're an employee. Now, if you're an employer and you've got this conjunction occurring in the sixth house, you might find that your um, subordinates, your employees, they're coming to you and saying, look, I'd really like this. You know, I'd like some help with, you know, my family situation or, you know, they're being more direct, more straight up about what they want. And if that's the case, you know, you, you can actually support them, help them, cooperate with them now. I would encourage you under this energy, if you're an employer and your employees are, you know, coming to you with those sorts of issues, see what you can do to help, cooperate, help, be there to fix and serve. That's what the sixth house energy is all about. You'll actually start a brand new two-year cycle that could really bless other people now. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to lose out. When we bless others, we don't lose out. We actually set good karma in motion. In fact, the sixth house has to do 
um, my Virgo friends, with our karma and paying our karmic dues. So if somebody comes to you asking for help now, asking you to help them fix a situation, this is your chance to burn karma and heal karma in your life so that your karmic load is lighter. So listen and help where you can, my friends. Um, it's our karmic responsibility here to serve. So if you're an employer and that's happening, um, you know, be receptive, be helpful as much as possible. You'll start a whole new cycle and maybe set up a, a cycle of blessing for yourself down the road in the future because you do so. Um, this is a, an Upachaya house where things get better through conscious effort and hard work. So we're setting up a whole new two-year cycle and it's through conscious effort and hard work that you might be able to um, restore and bring back into balance something to do with Venus Mars conjunction, a relationship, um, financial situation, a creative output perhaps. So keep that in mind as well. Work hard, do the crossing of the I's and the dotting of the T's and you might see ultimate fabulous blessing coming your way. Thank you, Virgo. Libra, Libra rising, Libra sun and Libra moon people. Venus and Mars are conjuncting in the lovely fifth house. I have to say this is nice for Librans. Why? Because this is a house that has to do with the joyfulness of sex and here Venus and Mars is this very sexy combination for excitement and passion and adventure. You Le Libran people are in for a good time when it comes to love and relationship. So you're also starting a brand new cycle with love and relationship as well. So um, how you input like the, the joy that you bring to your love life this week my Libran friends is going to be with you for going ahead for the next two years very very exciting and you might see the fruits of what is established this week playing out for you maybe in six months time a year's time two years time the fruits could last two years um, this is like I said a house of joy and what brings us joy and exhilaration excitement and happiness you're starting an, a, a, a cycle for excitement and joy and happiness not only with passion and love and sex and desire but with um, with your finances too and the ability to create financial um, blessing because Mars gives us the willpower to go get what we want and you'll feel joyful about going after what you want, pursuing what you want. You'll feel joyful about chasing some entrepreneurial opportunity. You'll have fun and, and excitement. It'll feel like playfulness to do so, to chase after some entrepreneurial opportunity to make money. So you might be starting a whole new cycle with that sort of thing. Artistic endeavors um, are represented here as well. We have the passion, Mars, to create something wonderful and be very artistic Venus about our creations and here in the house of our creative genius oh my goodness Librans you're going to be producing some of the most amazing works over the next two years it could be a, a literary work it could be an artistic work it could be um, some sort of performance but you're going to have a fun doing it and b you're going to have such a you know a heightened level of um creative genius that you're putting into those things it could be absolutely wonderful it's a house of celebrity as well now you if if you're seeking celebrity Librans then this is a, a combination for personal magnetism and you might find that your sexiness your desirability is really on show now and because of that it grows your popularity it increases your recognition out there in the world in the sign of Aquarius we're talking about being a celebrity probably on the internet in some way so some sort of platform some sort of social media you Librans can really grow your popularity and it'll start this week you know, it'll start with something that is instigated this week that then rolls on to bring blessing over the course of two years. So house of celebrity and popularity here happening for you. How wonderful. Because your sexiness and your magnetism is increased, people are going to notice you more because of this combination in the fifth house. 
It's also a combination for asserting ourselves and getting the cooperation that we need. And this is great for those of us who have children because this is the house of children. You know, you can go and say to your kids, right, I need you to, you know, step up <laughs> your game in some way in the family, in the household, and you'll actually get their cooperation. How fantastic. I'm keeping this in mind as a Libra and Moon person myself. Um, fantastic. Same goes for lovers, you know, you can assert yourself or you know be direct and straight up about what you need from lovers now and you'll get the cooperation from them that you might want as well Librans wow also because this is the house of children and lovers it's our children and lovers that might be turning over a new leaf in some way with money um, with relationship with their desirability with their financial matters or creative endeavors as well so you might notice children perhaps starting a new creative project um, you know or beginning some sort of new uh, side hustle that's going to make them a bit of money and to give them financial opportunity you might see your children or your lovers creating a budget for how they're going to manage their finances in the future this is uh, the conjunction of Venus Mars affecting the people of the fifth house our children and our lovers it's also the house of our ability to feel love it's our the house of um, the things that we love and Venus Mars things are going to be very much in the forefront of what we love over the next two years I'm, I'm so pleased to say this you know we're going to love excitement exhilaration we're going to love creating you know we're going to really enjoy the Venus Mars is a highly creative energy we're going to love creating new things we're going to love even like being entrepreneurial about making money Mars entrepreneurial new creative ideas instigating new things with Venus making money we're going to love that it's going to feel great to us and because we love it we're more enthusiastic we get involved we you know we're not sort of like oh, getting dragging ourselves out of bed every morning to go and you know make a buck with our creative endeavor no we're going to bounce out of bed it's going to be like full of um full of joy and excitement to do so so my friends who are libran this is a lovely lovely conjunction falling in a lovely lovely house enjoy you could even i would even say that you could get very lucky this is the house of luck librans you could be very lucky through your children through your lovers um, but particularly I would say through any intimate relationships you know that you have um, I'll just point out Mars is young men and Venus is young women if you have young men and young women who are your children you know like in their teens and 20s and maybe even into their 30s as well then it's those people that could be very a, a source of luck and blessing for you in the coming two years because of this conjunction forming in the house of luck it could also be that through your lovers and Venus and Mars as the two lovers meeting in the sky through your love relationship through the boyfriends that you might meet in the next two years through the girlfriends that you might encounter in the next two years you could be very lucky now I'll give you an example of how that might play out let's say you're a guy and you meet a girl and you're like you date her for three months maybe it doesn't work out maybe it does who knows but you meet her you're dating for around three months and in that three months you meet certain people Aquarius's networks you meet certain people who expand your horizons and give you opportunities to grow your success and then the relationship ends was that relationship lucky yes it was because it brought you into a sphere that you wouldn't have otherwise experienced that has blessed you and grown your successfulness in the world new contacts perhaps new new social circles that you wouldn't have had otherwise so um, I'm not saying that Venus Mars conjunction is going to bring in you know long-lasting relationships if you're a single person but it will certainly increase your luck and give you much more um, experiences of joy and happiness um, over the next two years so that is what I'm seeing for the lovely Librans who watch my channel alrighty Scorpio Scorpio rising Scorpio Sun and Scorpio moon people we've got Venus and Mars conjuncting in the fourth house what a fascinating house the fourth house is this is the house of our roots it's our heritage it's our lineage 
So it's also um, the people that we know from our family. Like it, it's the house of our... Um, our family but the people that we're close to you know this is our our closest bonds are seen from the fourth house now for some people that actually is our blood relatives our you know our mother our father our children but for most Scorpio people with Aquarius here it can often be your friends but it's the people that we are closest to who feel like family to us and that is where we're going to be seeing the conjunction of Venus and Mars playing out. You might meet a new love, a new relationship through somebody who is very close to you. You know, maybe your sister introduces you to uh, a new man, you know, um, or uh, if you're a Scorpio person, so a very dear, beloved friend introduces you at a, you know, a dinner one night to the, the new love of your life. So Mars, Venus is relationships that form through these close familial bonds that we have with other people. So that could be very, very exciting. Um, the, the bonds that do form for Scorpio people over the next two years, if you, if you develop a relationship, it's going to bring a lot of very deep, sparkly kind of intimacy that goes to the, the core of your being, you know, deep emotional connection. And I know that you Scorpio people really value that and appreciate that. So you're going to feel, yeah, really at home and comfortable with the new relationships that form for you over the next two years. Remember, this is beginning a new cycle and it's turning over a new leaf with love and relationship. Um, this is the house of our feelings and emotions, fourth house. Um, and so it's, it's saying that, you, your emotions are going to be experienced very directly, very straight up, very clearly. The energy of Venus and Mars is a very clear energy. You're going to know what you're feeling and therefore you'll be able to honor it. Mars-Venus conjunction gives us the willpower to go for what we desire and you're going to understand and be clear about your feelings and your desires and what you want right now and be able to therefore take action to make the make you know upon those desires to make those things manifest into reality being direct being straight up now this is the house as i said of our dear nearest and dearest our closest and here um we might find with venus mars conjunction that their magnetism and their desirability is increased so you know um, it's the house of our mother. Maybe our, our mother's been single for a while since dad passed away or whatever, the divorce, or mum's been on her own. And you might find that your mother is now just, you know, she's starting to go on dates. She's been, you know, out there meeting people and, and she's suddenly super duper popular. Mother energy in the fourth house in, and with this conjunction, there's an increase in personal magnetism, there's an increase in desirability. Everyone's lining up to date your mum. How exciting. <laughs> Your mother might also be displaying more of these energies I've been talking about, being direct, being straight up, um, asserting herself more and getting your cooperation. So Scorpio, you might find that a mother figure, if it's not your actual mother, um, is able to get you on board with a project or on board with a, something that they want to um, undertake. You show up for that because there's cooperation that fits in with a mother's self-assertion here in some way. The fourth house has to do with um, how we are when we're in our most private time, you know, how we behave when we're alone. Um, and here, you, you might be being very creative when you're on your own, Scorpio. That's when you might get out your poetry book and start writing, you know, lines and lines and lines of poetry. When you're on your own, you know, you might be... Um, yeah, you, you might be uh, art, being really artsy or doing some leather work that you haven't really touched in years and years. You might come back to it under this energy. This is an energy of creativity, Mars, Venus, conjunction. And the fourth house is what we do when we're alone. So you could be being very creative when you're alone and it makes you feel comfortable. It makes you feel at peace to do so, I would say. And whatever you establish now, let's say you pull out some old hobby, you know, calligraphy or 
leatherwork or whatever it happens to be you pull it out and it just makes you feel so good that over the next two years you're really honing that skill and enjoying that skill because you're starting a whole new cycle with this transit right here um, this is also the house of our roots it's the house yes of where we come from but also it's it's the house of where we're going back to it represents the second stage of life in fact it has to do with our older age our endings and um, and the, the final few years of our, our life and so if you are an older person and we've got this conjunction forming in your fourth house well you might find for the next two years if you're an older person say sort of 60 or above that suddenly you've got more opportunity for love you've got more opportunity for relationship your libido is heightened you're feeling more excited more passionate if you're an older Scorpio person this is a wonderful time that you are entering into a new cycle for the next two years where you might be feeling a lot more passion and a lot more enthusiasm for life how refreshing how wonderful to have this um, ha happening for you the fourth house is also our surroundings and the things that we surround ourselves with and and what we want to surround ourselves with and let's face it Scorpio you're going to want to surround yourself with passion sparkly intimacy love desire passion you're going to want that and because you want it in this energy that's forming you manifest it now and it'll begin this week you might notice that there's just more opportunity for excitement this week you're feeling more passionate about the things you're doing this week your artistic endeavors are just heightened and of course this is the house of home as well literal bricks and mortar home domestic life and so you might be bringing more artistry into your home you might be spending money on your home now Venus is to spend money here in the fourth house and when it's with Mars you sort of assert yourself you know maybe I was talking about this with another sign a little while ago um, in this reading but you jump on Facebook buy swap and sell and buy some items for your home and you'll have the Mars courage to assert yourself and say hey see that cupboard I, I you know you're asking for 80 bucks I'm gonna offer you you know 70 or I'm gonna offer you 60 and you'll be able to sort of assert yourself and get the cooperation you need when it comes to doing things in the home buying stuff for the home decorating the home getting builders and builders and tradies in to help you um, with the home in some way so the ability to assert ourselves in our home space in our domestic environment um, this week will see us getting what we want and getting the cooperation that we need so you might do that with your children um, you might do that with the tradies who are coming in to work on your house you might do it with somebody you're looking for a bargain for um, your home for um, all of these areas so lots of fun for our Scorpio rising Sun and moon people okay uh, Sagittarius Sagittarius rising Sagittarius Sun and Sagittarius moon people as usual Saggy likes to go for a walk so let me slow them down just a bit okay Sagittarius Venus Mars conjunction is forming on the 22nd of February in your third house and what does this bring you well it can bring you um, you know a brand new cycle with love and relationship that's going to be sparkly and exciting but it'll probably be established with some sort of important communication because the six, the third house rather is all about how we communicate and and verbalize and talk to other people so it, it may be that for many Sagittarius people um, relationships are characterized now by how we communicate and how we talk so for those single Sagittarius people you might meet somebody on social media third house is social media or you might send an email and it turns into like a exciting new relationship you know you've got to send a business email third house is business emails and lo and behold the other person on the other end sounds really lovely and you get chatting via email boom new relationship on the cards so that's another way that that can um, can manifest communication is how um, the relationships begin for Sagittarius people with this conjunction occurring I mean it's not about going to the bar and spotting that sexy person at the end of the bar and you know offering you know them a drink or something it's more you connect on a mental level 
on a communicative level rather than, oh gosh, they're hot kind of thing when this is forming in the third house. Um, we also might find that uh, if you're in a marriage relationship or a committed partnership, that you are talking more with your partner. Um, there's more more interaction of a, a verbal variety or maybe you're writing letters to your partner, love letters and cards and that sort of thing. Um, there's just an increase in that your desire to do that and there's an increase in maybe what you're receiving from your partner in, in terms of communication as well. This is also the house of crafts and crafts people, craftsmen. And this is conjunction is all about creativity. It's very much amped up and heightened now. So for Sagittarius people, your ability to play an instrument or you know do something with some woodworking or be you know use your skills and talents in some way is heightened. You're creative with your skills and talents. You're creative with your woodworking. You're creative with your musicality, you know, the things we do with our hands, our talents, our gifts, our, be, our ability to, to craft something is really enhanced by the conjunction of Venus Mars. It brings more artistic expression into your life. Mars rules tools. And what do you need to do most crafts? You need tools. You know, if you're knitting, you need knitting needles. If you're doing woodwork, you need wood cutting tools. You know, if you're doing calligraphy, you need a pen. Like, craftsmanship requires tools mars rules tools mars does very well here and venus is bringing the artistry so if you are a craftsperson utilizing tools you're going to be able to do amazing artistic work now um, and it's probably going to be with you for the next two years as this cycle unfolds so it's not just for the next week that you'll be producing beautiful artistic um, productions it's for the next two years that the fruit of this combination will be exhibiting. Um, very, very exciting. I find it anyway. I mean, you know, creating new things is always exhilarating and exciting. Now, this is also the house of our siblings, our relatives and our neighbours. So for some of you Sagittarius people, you might be noticing that your siblings are heightened in their magnetism. They might suddenly be more sparkly, they might have a more desirable energy to them. In fact, for the next two years, you might find that your sister is attracting all sorts of interested parties, wanting to take her on a date, wanting to you know, have a relationship with her. How wonderful for your siblings. Um, you might notice that your brother um, has a lot more um, vivacity to him and excitement and a, a sense of adventure that they don't usually have. Like the energy of Venus Mars conjunction plays out in the lives of our siblings and in also the lives of our neighbors as well. So that could be quite wonderful, especially for those of us who've got single siblings, um, that can be the case. If you have um, partnered siblings, it could just be that their relationships are energized somehow over the next two years, are given more sparkles and fireworks. Their relationships get their sexy on a lot more than usual, although you're probably not going to want to know the intimate details about that. <laughs> but could be good for your siblings anyway. Um, there is the energy of turning over a new leaf with money um, for Sagittarius people here because Venus and Mars is entrepreneurial endeavors that make us money and it's happening in the house of small business. Many of you Sagittarian people are going to get opportunities come from this conjunction that allow you to expand and enhance your entrepreneurial endeavors, your ability to make money through your own talents, through your own skill sets, through your own knowledge, maybe through teaching, maybe through um, giving your wisdom to others through courses or um, workshops, that kind of thing. Um, but there certainly is the ability through a small business or a side hustle to make more income, more money, um, especially if you assert yourself, you step up, you take that forward step and say, hey, notice me. This is a house of marketing and advertising as well. So it's in promoting yourself, putting yourself out there. It's having the courage to step up. Mars is courage in the house of, of um, marketing and advertising that you get what you want. Be straight up, be honest, no dilly-dallying, no sort of sidestepping, you know, just say what you want. Hey, I want to get on Joe Rogan or hey, I want to advertise on your magazine or whatever it happens to be. By stepping up and being honest and straight up, 
we have the capacity to really enhance our small business, get what we want. Um, when we um, practice self-assertion under a Venus-Mars conjunction in the third house, we, when we assert ourselves, you know, online, on the internet, um, perhaps we're asserting ourselves uh, with, our, with reference to our small business or our side hustle, then we get people coming on board. We get the cooperation that we need from others in order to succeed. So maybe we approach an advertiser and we say, hey, I want to advertise my small business um, wherever it happens to be on your, you know, on your blog or something like that. And they, they're like, yep, absolutely. You can certainly advertise on my blog or I'll certainly promote you on my podcast. Um, Venus Mars conjunction gives um, our ability to assert ourselves and the cooperation of other people to make it happen. Very, very exciting if you're wanting to be seen in the world uh, of marketing, advertising, you know, promotions, uh, social media, podcasts, blogs, all that kind of stuff. So that could be really good if you've been working towards that end for some time. Um, this is a house of bravery due to our mental narrative and Mars is the energy of bravery. So a lot of you Sagittarian people are going to be feeling more brave than ever before. Sagittarius is a brave energy, fire signs usually are, but here with this conjunction it's going to be uh, for the next two years an ability to really um, instigate new things, make new startups, to not be afraid of what people think. You know, you're going to have that mental ability to say, well, I don't care what they say. I'm doing me. I'm doing it my way. This is a, a really great energy. Aquarius is the energy of um, independence and being unique and standing out from the crowd. And with this conjunction of Venus Mars here giving you so much more courage and self-assertion than usual and it's received well, my goodness, there's no, no limit to how much success you could have in the next two years, Sagittarius, with your own small business or, the, or being able to make money from your own um, talents and abilities. This is the, the third house is the second from the second, so it represents the, what we need to do in order to make self-made wealth, you know, to make money from our own endeavors is a third house thing. And this is a wonderful conjunction to bring about more opportunity, more um, courage to make that happen. You'll also have an increase in personal magnetism, Sagittarius, that's going to make you very desirable to people. So your business will be desirable. You know, you go on a, uh, an interview on a, on a YouTube channel or something like that and everybody just thinks you're the bee's knees. It's giving you this sexy desirability, this magnetism in social media and online platforms of that nature that could really enhance um, your presence in the world. Very wonderful for our Sagittarius friends. And finally, whew, what a long astro weather report this has been, guys. We are at Capricorn. Thanks for sticking with us to the end, Capricorn. The energy of Venus and Mars in a conjunction is falling for you guys in the second house. It's quite an interesting place to be having this conjunction because this is about start ending an old cycle and starting a new cycle with financial matters. It's about other things as well, but let's start with that. So you might be starting a whole new cycle with material goods, your resources, your food, your shelter, your clothing. Um, and this new cycle could last for the next two years. This is a, a good cycle. Venus and Mars is the conjunction of the two lovers. They benefit one another in the sky when they come together in the sky. So it's about, um, like I said, starting a new cycle with what you need to make yourself feel stable and comfortable and secure materially in life. And what you're going to do to what you need to do, how you, how you need to be in order to bring more stability and security into your life is to be straight up and direct, to be honest, to assert yourself, you know. You want the, those shoes in the window of the shop, right. You go in and you ask, Give, can I have those shoes for $10 off? You might be very surprised with the response that you get. You jump online. I mean, Aquarius is online. You get on Facebook, buy, swap and sell and you assert yourself and say, I want a discount on, I don't know, um, those fake flowers that I'm looking at online for some reason. 
um, Venus is beauty <laughs> and beautiful things. Maybe not fake things, though. That's more of a Pisces energy or a Neptune energy. Okay, so maybe you're looking at some floral arrangement online or something, and you get a line and you, you like you assert yourself. I want that, and I want it for a, a discount. I want it for a bargain, and because of your courage, because of your ability to step up and be straight up and direct about what you want, you get it. Now, some of you might try that on and it doesn't go your way. <laughs> I don't know why that might be the case, but try it on and see what happens. Use your courage and see what, what can happen for you, what your willpower and your assertion can get you under this energy of Venus-Mars conjunction on the 22nd of February, my friends. This is also um, the energy, uh, the second house is all about what we value and our self-worth and our self-value. Venus-Mars conjunction can give you more confidence, Capricorn, can give you more um, just self-assurance and clarity about who you are. You know who you are, you know what you're worth, and you're not going to take second place, you know? Um, you know, for example, maybe maybe you're uh, you, you've been getting less than what you deserve for some endeavor maybe you've been writing articles for something and you, you're getting less than what you deserve somebody's taking advantage of your generosity or your goodness well along comes venus mars conjunction in the house of self-worth and self-value and you you assert yourself and say now look i've been writing these articles for you know 20 bucks a, a pop i'm sorry but i think i'm worth at least 100 i'm not going to take any less if you don't like it then I'll, I'm, I'll take my talents elsewhere this is about asserting yourself to get what you deserve and believe me you can actually get what you deserve now you can get the cooperation you need don't be afraid to go and say hey I, I need to be more well rewarded um, that can be in terms of finances but it could be more well rewarded in the case of love and relationship Venus Mars conjunction is about love sex and partnership and you might be able to go to your partners now, Capricorn friends, and say, look, I, I think you've been taking me for granted. You know, I'm doing all the cleaning and I'm doing all the, you know, the, the hard yards in the garden and I, I'd just like you to step up and at least value me a little more. That's what Venus-Mars conjunction in the house of self-worth and value can mean. You take a direct approach, a self-assertive, courageous approach to a partner to get your self-worth and you might be very surprised at the agreeableness the cooperation the harmony that you receive in response so that could be very nice for many Capricorn people who are feeling a little bit hard done by in that regard now the the second house is also the house of storage and it, it actually refers to what we store emotionally what we're hanging on to and clinging on to and let's face it Aquarius is a fixed sign for Capricorn people, there can be some clinging to emotional baggage, perhaps, storing up emotional memories here. Venus-Mars conjunction is going to give you the, um, the direct, straight-up approach to deal with that emotional baggage. And so I'd encourage you, my Capricornian friends, deal with it. Like, you know, do the work. Get that self-help book to help release that emotional baggage. You have the, the courage and the willpower to approach these things and do the work now to release these things from your psyche as well. Um, okay, so Venus in the second house pertains to beauty and it's a house of material things. So you might be spending money now on things that make you beautiful you know perfumes beautiful clothes makeup all that kind of stuff venus is beautiful things but equally mars is a planet of entrepreneurism and here it is in the second house with venus in a conjunction you might start up uh, some sort of entrepreneurial endeavor to make money second house is how we can make money um, through selling makeup through selling clothing through selling sweet decadent food that's Venus maybe you start up a uh, Mars is to use tools and Venus is things like sweet delicacies and pleasures like wedding cake you might start up um, a venture that um, some entrepreneurial venture where you are using tools cooking tools to make beautiful wedding cakes and you open a cake shop 
and you make a lot of money from your cake shop venus's cake and decadence venus is also love and romance here in the house of material things mars is using tools lo and behold you make money out of a cake shop you could also make money from other venus mars type things you know maybe you're selling roses mars rules thorns venus rules flowers here you go you've got an opportunity to start an entrepreneurial venture involving roses for example sake i mean there's so many things that venus mars in a conjunction represent in the material realm um it could be that you you know start up a a seamstress business venus is clothing mars is to use tools sewing maybe you're uh, uh, starting up some sort of a design business you use tools to design things and venus is beautiful design so any venus mars conjunctions can bring a source of money now and this is not just for this week you might establish something that builds and grows and flourishes over the next two years while we go through this whole cycle for 24 months of venus mars before they reconnect in the sky again so think about it what mars ruled things and venus ruled things can come together for you to allow you to increase your revenue your money the resources that you have for life of course money is a resource so lots of wonderful things are represented by venus mars conjunction in the second house for our beautiful capricorn friends i would also suggest if you do want to start some entrepreneurial endeavor that involves venus and mars i would put yourself online as well um, to to do well out of that because of course it's happening in the sign of aquarius which is about online selling you know so you start a rose farm and you know you you're selling roses at the farm gate but you're also selling roses online cut roses or planted roses you go online with it so that's my suggestion to make the most of the energy of venus mars conjunction for our wonderful capricorn friends now i have talked your ear off for so long here thank you for sticking with me everybody i hope that this conjunction of venus mars is an absolute blessing to everyone thank you for joining me here at guiding star astrology i look forward to sharing another astro weather report with you next week